Mi manito. So we are all set. Uh, we'll start. Very good evening to all the uh, participants. We are very happy to invite you to the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce Knowledge Session on Foreign Collaboration in Industry, Guidelines and Regulations. Um, I'm uh, very happy to introduce uh, our um, Vice Chairman of uh, our Indo American Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mr. Um, Ganesh Subhudi, uh, who is the CFO for uh, K. Raheja Group. Uh, Mr. Ganesh has over 25 years of experience in the real estate sector and uh, he is widely known. Uh, uh, for his collaborations in the real estate sector. With this initial introduction, now I take the opportunity to invite Mr. Ganesh Subhadin to give a formal welcome remarks to the participants. Over to you, Mr. Ganesh. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So on behalf of Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, Andhra and Telangana, it is my pleasure to welcome all our members and guests. Special welcome to our eminent speaker for today's session. Mr. Sivarama Prasad Motor Garu, founder partner Raju, and Prasad Chattered Accountants. Today's exclusive session would broadly cover what is collaboration, need for collaboration, historical perspective, technological transfer, silent futures, FDA policy and gaps, guidelines and regulations on foreign collaborations, taxations, etc. Also, it will cover service industry export of technology and related issues. <clears throat> Dear members, please note that Indo-American Chamber of Commerce will share today's presentation with speakers details for your reference. As you all know, Indian Indo-American Chamber of Commerce is an apex bilateral chamber synergizing India-US economical engagement and major objective is to promote Indo-American business, trade and economic relations. IACC promotes bilateral trade, facilitate, it also facilitates business collaborations, joint ventures, marketing tie-ups, and strategic alliances through set of proactive business-oriented initiative by organizing different programs, sessions like today's session. Indo-American Chamber of Commerce of both the states organize seminar, seminars, knowledge sessions, an interactive meeting for all our members. We very closely work with the state governments, US consulates, central government on various issues related to visas, trade barriers, and other pertinent matters. We facilitate B2B meetings with, for our inbound delegations from USA with the industry sectors in India and arrange outbound delegations to USA in collaboration with our partners in USA and identify potential partners, buyers, etc. ISEC coordinates meeting with trade development missions for promotion of bilateral trade. Also works on advocacy and representation with government on behalf of Indian and American companies on policies and trade related matters. Today, I also want to take this opportunity to introduce our today's eminent speaker. Sri M. Siv Prasad is a senior chartered accountant and founder partner of Ms. Raju and Prasad Chartered Accountants, established in 1979 with branches at Mumbai, Bangalore, Thane, and Tirupati. He is a founder director of Promen Consultancy Private Limited Limited, a financial consultancy firm accredited by financial institutions and banks. He served as a central statutory auditor of various banks and statutory auditor of several public sector and private sector undertakings. He has conducted many feasibility studies and issued project reports for various industries like 
pesticides, oil, tubular goods, industrial fasteners, granites, multi-specialty hospitals, dairy and chemical and and has done loan syndications. He acted as an advisor to public public issue of shares and specialized in foreign collaborations agreement. He has also presented papers in two international conferences of chartered accountants in Chicago and Shanghai. He is also an author of a book, Handbook on Statutory Order of Statutory Order of Book. And he has also written My View and Re Reviews in two volumes. He is a former vice president and long-standing secretary of Basic Research, Education and Development Society, a charitable society serving the needs for the poor students. He is a, he is a founder and treasurer of Jubilee Hills Educational Society, running a public school at Hyderabad. He is a founding member and first treasurer of Jubilee Hills International Center. With these words, I request Mr. S Mr. M. Sivaram Prasad Moturu to address the members. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh. And I thank uh, Mrs. Sujata Ravishankar for inviting me. I, it is a, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. And uh, I thank the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce. It was a pleasant surprise for me one day when Shikha Sabarwal asked me whether I will be interested in doing a webinar. Oh, I was uh, not very, uh, uh, you know, expecting that kind of a thing, but though I was uh, surprised and then I thought, let me select something which is useful instead of a traditional chartered accountants, taxation or, or auditing. That's how I have selected this foreign collaborations as a, as, a, as a topic. And I thank all the committee members of the Hyderabad chapter, as well as uh, uh, the throat, uh, I think the pan, India, I think you are circulating this uh, program, broadcasting this program. So I thank all the uh, committee members of all the chapters and I will uh, be telling uh, uh, a few of my experiences while doing this uh, in, the, in the profession, especially in the foreign collaboration segment. During 80s and 90s, we have been doing this uh, foreign collaboration in industry. And we, we, I had a good experience in this uh, field, so which I will share. So we, we have done collaborations with DAB, that is Detroit Aluminum and Brass Company, which is uh, for the purpose of bimetal bearings. And Baker Hughes for oil country tubulars goods, Sun's defibrator of Italy for manufacturing of medium density fiber goods, then Sussex Group Incorporated USA for jellyfield cables, COP GmbH for electrical switches, Ekron rubber for female condoms. These are the various and many others we have done. So which I am not keen on telling. So these are the things and we have, I have prepared this on the basis of uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, guidelines given and FDA policy that is updated up to 15, 10, 2020 and master direction of RBA on foreign direct investment, foreign investments uh, dated 17-3-2022 and Niti Ayog's report on uh, R&D, etc. These are the things. So I would love to tell you something is uh, Indo-American Chamber is doing a great job as Mr. Ganesh has explained and we have a lot of trade relationship with the American companies, and uh, we have a lot of uh, technology transfer agreements also uh, with the uh, uh, USA. So as of today, as 21-22, there is a positive balance, trade balance, uh, as far as US trade is concerned, 
uh, of 2.44 lakhs, that is the provisional figures, and exports of 5.71 lakh crores and imports of 3.23 lakh crores. So this is a very, very positive sign as far as the Indo-US trade is concerned. And India is a very, uh, uh, I, I can't say it's a favored nation, but, but it is the ninth largest goods global trading partner with 92 billion US dollars, that is with USA and 12th largest goods export market for USA, and 10th largest goods supplier with 57 billion. These are the uh, statistics as per the uh, US Trade Representative Office. These are the figures of 2019. That is, that is the most ava recently available authentic figures. These are, so that shows the relationship with India and America are so important from the point of view of trade as well as industry. So now coming to the collaborations. Collaboration is basically a partnership or association to act together for making are producing something, either, uh, uh, either technology or research or even goods or products. The collaboration is always for cooperation and it is for assistance and it is for improvement. This is the basic background of any collaboration. Why this collaboration is required? First of all, because India is a developing nation and its spending on research and development is very low. And in fact, it is negligible compared to many developed countries. As a result, when we have to develop the industry or trade or technology or even education, the collaborations are required. That's how this entire thing has, uh, is very important for, for the industry as well as trade. As per the Niti Aayog report on R&D expenditure, which is released in, on 15-10-2022, which is the latest, India has spent very negligible amount. That is in 2008-9, it was 0.8% of the GDP. Whereas in 2017-18, it has come to 0.07% uh, of 0.7% uh, of uh, GDP. Whereas the global average is 1.8% and USA spends 2.9% of the GDP, Sweden 3.2%, Switzerland 3.4% and Israel 4.5%. So government of India is now planning to increase this expenditure from 1% to 2% in the coming year. Maybe this may be one of the uh, proposed things in the coming budget also. So the necessity for importing this technology is for improving productivity, new product development and technological development and technological advancement. There are three things. One is the product, new product development, because there are a number of products which are being produced all over the world and they are not available in developing countries. That is one of the reasons. And technological advancement, that is R&D, as well as improving the existing processes and existing practices. This is another requirement. That is, uh, that is the reason collaboration is is uh, required and for setting up the industries uh, and modernizing the existing industries. The existing industries which are established some years ago or decades ago, they need to be modernized. So that is also one of the reasons to, to have collaborations and to achieve technical competence and self-reliance. 
and possible exports because today's in globalized uh, environment the this is what is required to compete in the international markets then what is the historical perspective behind it the government of india when it was formed in 1947 after independence the government understood that british during the british rule industries were started to suit the requirements of foreign requirements they were not transferring the technology if they are transferring the technology they but they were only treating it as their branches and the technology was always controlled by the foreign companies so this was understood by the government and it was a regime of dependence during the british regime that was the reason why the government was interested in uh, uh, getting into this then the uh, to tell this examples are pharma industry pharma industry where we were only making tablets and tonics and the basic drug was always controlled by the foreign companies so understanding this mischief idpl was started and ultimately the with the russian collaboration and other collaborations we started making the basic drug this is one of the examples and uh, the example for starting and treating as indian companies as the branches one was wimco wimco is was manufacturing the match boxes and uh, that was started in 1923 then uh, cherry blossom shoe polish that was started in 1906 and it controls even today 93% of the canteen stores business and 75% of the total market of the shoe polish in the country though there was not a great technology involved in this nor marketing involved in this then similarly colgate pamali which was looking after dental care and skin care this was started in 1937 so understanding this after transferring of the technologies also and many com companies were the uh, neither they were not tra transferring and another thing is they are controlling the total capital that's how the 1974 fera regulation has come into picture then 1976 the dilution of fera that is foreign exchange regulation act was first made in 74 and 76 dilution of the equities was proposed by the government and the regulation allowed the foreign companies to hold up to 40% uh equity and balance to uh, uh, be liquidated into the indian holding and 60 they have also allowed up to 74% in case they are holding uh, their their uh, exports are 60% of their total uh, sales so that's how up to 74% also they have uh, it was allowed and this is the the background of uh, foreign equity dilution and uh, especially in uh, then 1948 we have started the industrial policy resolution the policy resolution envisaged rapid industrialization because that was the need of the hour and the prime minister nehru made a statement in the parliament also on this and the industrialization is with indian enterprises that is to encourage the enterprises indian enterprises and the foreign technology to serve the national interests this is how the 48 policy envisaged in 49 it emphasized the need to confirm the industrial policy that means earlier the policies were not framed and policy is framed with an intention to promote the indian industry and 
allowing foreign technology to come, but not allowing the foreign equity to control the Indian industry. That was the background. So in, the, in this game, the government of India also visualized the acquisition of foreign countries, foreign companies. So the foreign companies were also uh, 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 was envisaged that uh, foreign companies can be acquired and a compensation can be worked out in case they are working out. That, that's how the 49 resolution was. These are the initial stages of the industrial uh, industrialization of the country. Then came the 91 resolution, which is the very important resolution because 91 was the year of uh, uh, liberalization. So the reforms that took place and in that earlier, the publicitary undertakings were, I mean, there were a number of industries that were reserved, reserved for publicity undertakings. But ultimately in 90, uh, presently, there are only two industries that are presently uh, uh, reserved for the publicity undertakings, that is railway operations and atomic energy. This is the, uh, this is the aftermath of liberalization in 91. Then, Industrial licensing is liberalized, and there are only five uh, uh, industries that require industrial licensing. That is, alcoholic drinks, cigars, and cigarette, uh, uh, cigars and cigarettes, tobacco, manufactured uh, tobacco substitutes, aerospace, and defense equipment. These are the only industries which require compulsory license. Then, automatic route was also started for foreign collaborations in high priority industries as, as per annexure three of the industrial policy. But today, after liberalization, uh, the licensing is only re uh, restricted to those five uh, sectors where I was in the, in the previous uh, point. That this, the tiny sector was also introduced with a fixed capital of five lakhs in those years. Now, there is a draft industrial policy 2022, which is being drafted as per the government. Then the, the objectives are competitiveness and capability, economic integration and global value chain, attractive investment destination, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, global scale and standards, integrated investment promotion. That means what we are aiming at 2022 is the global scale of standards. That means we want to improve the further the standards and the, and the quality standards and manufacturing standards. Then innovation and entrepreneurship. So the, the, there, is, there is going to be a more thrust on developing the entrepreneurship also and making India as a investment destination, attract to investment destination, though it is also a, a, a well-known investment destination already. And these are the objectives of 22. For all these things, there was a background that is in 1966, the Mudalayar committee was uh, formed the Air Committee was formed by the uh, government to examine mainly whether we should import technology because we were all the time thinking in terms of Swadeshi and uh, the, the, those were the years of uh, early years of uh, uh, and also you we had the uh, hangover of the British and the foreign companies uh, squeezing our profits. This is one of the reasons why the Madhulayar committee was asked to look into uh, uh, and uh, the idea is what is the extent of import of technology that we can allow. And then capability of indigenous technologies for commercial exploitation, whether we can exploit our own technologies 
and see whether they are capable of commercial exploitation. These are the things that, uh, they, and uh, 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 the Madhuliyar committee has uh, examined and they have given certain recommendations. The recommendations are positive approach for import of technology. So don't see anybody with doubt. So if, if there is a good technology, you import, but you it should have certain uh, conditions attached and uh, and you can also import the capital goods because we were not into machinery manufacturing in industry in those years then the though we are allowing capital goods and technology uh, the duration is always recommended as 5 to 10 years 5 to 10 years then avoid the duplicity of technology import. That is, means if there is already a technology in the country, then you should not allow the import of technology uh, uh, again for, uh, because it, it uh, encourages unhealthy competition and also the market will be dumped with uh, that. This is how they, they were thinking. Then the, the underlying principle is to encourage the existing industry and industry in the existing Indian industry to import the technology, unlike the foreign companies coming and squeezing. This was the original thought of 66, 67. And they, they also it recommended liberal approach for export oriented uh, uh, projects and enterprises. The recommendations were accepted by government of India in 1967. Uh, that's how the Madhuliyar committee recommendations were uh, implemented. Then on the basis of the Madhuliyar Committee, the government of India has, thought of, uh, has uh, decided further where foreign investment cannot be permitted, where only technical collaboration might be permitted and there is no need for capital. And uh, where no foreign collaboration is required at all because we have already got the indigenous technologies. This is how the, the industries were divided into three categories. Then what is foreign technology? The foreign technology is always the process technology. It can be the manufacturing process, the manufacturing process, the know-how and the, the know-how and the process technology, which were already uh, proven and commercially produced elsewhere. Only such uh, technologies were uh, uh, allowed to come into the country. So the process technology needs to be whatever is imported, importing they, these things to be, they should be proven technologies and they are to be uh, imported only after getting the registered uh, in, in some other country. That, that's how the process technology and the, but the, uh, in this process, what is technology? In fact, the Income Tax Act has visualized uh, while, uh, because income tax is powerful because of ultimately everybody has to pay taxes. So in Income Tax Act, section nine envisages or, or prescribes transfer of all or any right in respect of a secret formula or process or trademark or similar property. This is what is the technology which they are uh, describing in. Then imparting of any information concerning technical, industrial, commercial, or scientific knowledge. These are the three things. This is also treated as technology information concerning technical, industrial, or commercial, or scientific knowledge. That means the 
the know-hows and uh, the industrial manufacturing uh, processes or industrial manufacturing uh, uh, methods the, uh, uh, that is the te technology transfer then uh, design engineering is also called design engineering is also a process and is, is the part of the process uh, uh, technology for the manufacturing because most of the com uh, companies cannot afford foreign exchange and the, uh, the country also cannot afford a lot of foreign exchange to import everything. So that is the reason the design engineering is also required to make certain, uh, certain things in India with the, with the design engineering uh, uh, assistance of the foreign collaborator. Then comes technical assistance. There, there are experts and technical experts, they can come and assist the uh, technology transfer till it reaches the commercial production. That is another uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, collaboration. So this includes process technology, design engineering and technical assistance. These are the three aspects. The, the foreign collaboration uh, agreement or the foreign collaboration, it may not, it need not be always technology transfer. It can be coupled with equity participation and it can be coupled with marketing assistance and export development. In equity participation, if you go to equity participation, the equity participation can be fixed or it can be perpetual. That means once you join, you, you are there permanently, unlike uh, certain uh, uh, earlier examples. So equity participation can be, so they can be treated as joint ventures. When there is a joint venture, there can be uh, uh, an equity participation continuously. Also, then is the sometimes the even external commercial borrowing can be converted, and that can be also treated as equity in this. Uh, then the collaborators can also the, the there is also buyback of uh, buyback of collaborators equity by the Indian party. This is, these are the various aspects of equity participation when we think of a foreign collaboration. Then under marketing assistance, the marketing information, the collaborator can give where the markets are available. So with where you can market and how to market, these are the uh, uh, assistance that you can take from the collaborator and the exact, uh, the, the, that's how the foreign collaborator, because some some of these collaborators have got many uh, the operations in many countries, so they can always have the market intelligence. So the marketing assistance includes market intelligence also. Then export development. Since the foreign collaborator has got operations in many countries, and he is also prepared to take up the export of the products that is manufactured that are manufactured by the indian party so that is one thing uh, very important because uh, these days many foreign com companies are coming to india as uh, and making this as a, a manufacturing hub and uh, marketing the products abroad and that is a positive sign for uh, indian uh, uh, economy because we, 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 have, we can earn a lot of foreign exchange also by way of exports and our exposure to the various export markets. This is the, then if you really see the trends in our technology transfers, that is collaborations from 81 to 2001, this is a, a two decade of uh, uh, information. The, the, uh, sectors that are covered are consultancy and other services, electrical and electronics, chemicals, mechanical engineering, 
transportation others these are the things and if you you can see very well in this usa is the america as i was telling in the opening remarks america we have a lot of collaboration uh, uh, on technology transfers in in two decades we we had 651 uh, collaborations in, uh, in from uh, america the, so the, though there are other countries america is always in the front run the collaboration agreements can be further classified into technical assistance agreements as we have already mentioned about the technical assistance as a part of the uh, te technology transfer or well, the technical assistance is also uh, see is impar important because it is imparting of technology with the experts participating it is not simply giving some formulae and giving some uh, uh, specifications so they assist in in the setting up of the industry and also they associate till it reaches the uh, commercial production or the rated capacity in the industry that's how the technical assistance agreements are visualized and uh, uh, and they also assist in r d effort the technical assistance agreements also are meant for r d efforts so that that is as far as technical assistance agreements are concerned and all these uh, uh, the uh, technical assistance agreements also have the background of the Madhulayar Committee recommendations because the Madhulayar Committee recommendations were, were, uh, were, have visualized the updating of technology. So the updating of technology is possible with technical assistance. The license agreements, the license agreements are only to license the manufacture of a particular product uh, and also for a particular period these are the, these are called the licensing agreements and they uh, in the in this the intellectual property may be transferred uh, uh, for a particular period and uh, that's how the licensing agreements are are uh, uh, i mean they are drafted then there are material transfer agreements. Here, there are agreements where a new, a new material that is formed, that is invented, and the industrial research helps them to um, uh, make it into a commercial product. So that's where the, the, the materials are transferred to other co companies, that is especially the re research laboratories and uh, these they, they they it is ultimately transferred for the purpose of uh, making it commercially feasible so this is like lab level uh, experiment to prototype product and then uh, commercial exploitation these are the three stages so in that Material transfer agreements are very important as far as uh, uh, lab level to commercialization. Then we, and this is, uh, then another, another thing is facility use public service agreements. The facility use civil service agreements are mainly to, in the service industry like hotel industry, or the hospitality industry, is one of the uses, I mean, examples where facility use agreements are, uh, are uh, uh, specially uh, uh, drafted for the purpose of then cooperative research and development agreements. These are between government to government or a government lab to 
private parties. This is where research and development is is uh, is further for the furtherance of research and development. So these are the cooperative research and development agreements. With the cautious approach, as I was explaining right from the beginning, we were not allowing each and every industry to be started because we had priorities. So we never wanted every industry to be started in the country. So afterwards we have liberalized. That was in 1991. The cautious approach of both for the technology transfer as well as foreign direct investment, we were afterwards in, in 91, it was liberalized and approval was given by RBA FDA up to 50, 51, 74 in high priority industries. Now, high priority industries are no more relevant. That that uh, schedule is no more relevant. So, uh, but now also RBA gives uh, the approvals up to 100 percent uh, in certain uh, industries uh, under automatic route, which we'll examine in the, in a later slide. Then foreign equity proposals other than the above require prior clearance. So anything that is, is not falling under the automatic route and where they are, they have to take approval route, then they have to go by the government route. That is how the foreign direct investment policy has envisaged. Then there are certain industries which cannot be permitted for establishment with FDA. That is lottery business, including government, private lottery, online lotteries, gambling and betting, the chit funds, Nidhi company, trading in transferable development rights. Transferable development rights are mainly, the, they are in the real estate sector where uh, so that there is also a, then real estate construction also is is uh, is not permitted with foreign direct investment. Then manufacturing cigars, cheroots, cigarettes, cigarettes of tobacco or tobacco substitutes. Then the two sectors that are not open for private sector that is atomic energy and railway operations. As I have already explained this, that they are reserved for publicity undertakings. So the, this particular chart will show which are uh, the industries that are allowed with under automatic route and uh, approval route. Uh, uh, so uh, alpha, uh, uh, agriculture is the first one which uh, it is in the schedule, uh, but agriculture is a, a misleading word because we are not allowing agriculture I mean, investment in the real agriculture sector where you know we are growing crops so it is only allowed in floriculture and horticulture because agriculture is protected uh, in india because a large number of small and small farmers are involved in the well, uh, the workers are involved that's that's the reason so though it is called agriculture and animal husbandry agriculture is a broad term even if you allow grass to i mean uh, 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 grazing uh, the land for the grazing grass also are uh, included in the definition of agriculture. Then agro and allied sectors, that is, uh, that is agro-based agro industries. Then these are the things, and animal husbandry is allowed. Plantation sector, of course, it is allowed right from the beginning. So only earlier tea and coffee used to be there, rubber, and now you have some trees also, palm island olive oil trees. Then mining is one area where 100% uh, uh, automatic route is av available. Uh, but only thing is the, the mining and mineral separation of titanium bearing minerals is, is reserved for uh, the 100% approval route. Then petroleum and natural gas fields, that is 100%. Then refining, refining only is reserved for publicity tariff, uh, for, for uh, automatic is 49 and balance is with publicity tariff. 
defense up to 74% subject to the defense policy and the industrial licensing policy. See here, uh, the if you see the industrial broadcasting content, broad, broad, broadcasting is uh, uh, is allowed, uh, uh, but uh, broadcasting is allowed under uh, the approval route. Uh, so then print media, civil aviation, these are all various uh, different uh, industries that are, so the, the, it gives a broad outlook of the government where you can allow uh, the, uh, the foreign uh, investment where you cannot allow foreign investment even after the liberalization and liberalized policies. So that's uh, one can uh, understand the uh, uh, difference. Next. Next. So, uh, banking, banking in private sector is allowed up to forty nine percent, whereas uh, public sector only twenty percent. That is also allowed under the approval rule. This is one of the things which which is protected uh, by government. Then. Uh, Greenfield and brownfield projects in uh, pharmaceuticals, they are separated. Greenfield projects are the, the, the fresh projects which are allowed under 100% automatic route. And uh, brownfield is allowed in up to 74%. So then pension sector is up to 49%. And these are the broad classifications uh, uh, given by the uh, sec sector-wise classification given by uh, government of India, FDA policy, this is updated up to 15, 10 to 2020. But anybody who is, receives this foreign direct investment uh, have to inform RBI within 30 days automatic under automatic road. But here one uh, point which we have to understand is entities and citizens of Pakistan or any other country sharing land border cannot invest without prior approval, though they are foreign countries. The FDA is restricted to them. This is as per the master's uh, direction of RBI dated 17322. And whenever there is a collaboration agreement, there is a administrative department which has to clear the collaboration because that is the approval route. So if you are in uh, uh, any of these sectors, whatever sectors you have, so each sector has got an administrative department and uh, which has to uh, clear the proposal. The so, so we can see the foreign direct investment flows uh, uh, up to 2021 and 21-22. Uh, that is from 17-18 onwards. So if you see, the major FDI inflows are coming from Singapore, 17.4, 15.9, that is 21-22. So, US is either in the second position, mostly second position in the recent years. Earlier it used to be uh, 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 in the lower levels. Mauritius is another uh, country which has, uh, which has given a lot of foreign direct investment, but it has come down if you can see the chart that is over years. It, has, it is coming down because Mauritius, anybody is there is a stigma if the bar, if the money is coming from Mauritius. That is that's how the it is visualized. And uh, the statistics of uh, FDA are as per the Reserve Bank of India. Then the industry-wise also, the 
foreign direct investment flows are uh, given by RBI. So in this, if you if you see the total uh, investment that is received in 2021 is 59.6 billion US dollars. Out of this, a major money has been received by the computer services industry that is in 2021. Whereas in the earlier years, it was not so much. So that is what one should note. Manufacturing industry is getting about nine to 10% uh, in all the years that is consistent, more or less consistent. Uh, transport sector is another sector which is receiving uh, more now. That is, uh, the, these are the uh, analysis of uh, the uh, uh, industry-wise analysis of foreign direct investment. The purpose of uh, explaining the foreign direct investment is the latest policy of government of India is simple. Wherever foreign direct investment is allowed, the technology transfer is also allowed. So there are no two lists except some of the prohibited uh, sectors. So wherever uh, FDI is allowed, technology is also allowed. So what is technology transfer? The technology transfer is, as I already explained, technology transfer is, uh, is reduced to writing by way of an agreement, by way of an agreement. So what this agreement should contain? Similarly, the technology transfer, when you are negotiating also, you should, you should, uh, 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 keep these things in mind uh, uh, while negotiating also. So description of the parties. The description of the parties should always uh, include their successors, their assignees, their uh, um, legal heirs also. Legal heirs in the sense, sometimes individuals may be transferring the technology. So the legal heirs also are to be included because we have come across one case where a company of, uh, uh, was taken over by an American company is taken over by a Canadian company. And ultimately the Canadian company said, we are not uh, interested in giving the uh, technology. The, the, this is one thing that one should uh, be very careful while negotiating that uh, that class should be very clear about it then intent to transfer the technology and receive the technology. This should be very clear in the uh, uh, transfer of technology agreement. And uh, well, that is the basic premise of the technology transfer uh, agreement. Then the definitions, see the, uh, the agreement should clearly define what is know-how, what which manufacturing process you are giving, you are transferring, and what are the technical services or technical assistance that you can, uh, uh, provide. This has to be defined very clearly. Otherwise, the, uh, the purpose of technology transfer is defeated because there, can, there, there is a very possibility of having a dispute at a later date. And uh, also they have to mention about the pat patents, copyrights. As I already explained, it, the technology should be uh, 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 a technology that is patented and registered and tried elsewhere successfully commercially. That's how it is. And that should be mentioned also in the agreement that it is. And the idea is even Madhuryar committee in 66 itself says that the technology should not, should not be obsolete. See some of the developing nations, they always want to rub the technology which is obsolete on the, develop, uh, the, on the developing countries, the developed countries. So, so that's where we should, be very careful whether the technology is the latest. And the technology also should be uh, not only developed by them, sometimes during the course of this agreement, they may acquire certain new technologies also. Some, even the acquisition of technology should be taken into consideration while uh, doing, uh, doing this uh, agreement and it should be included. 
then transmission of the technology. The transmittal, transmittal earlier it used to be, if it is transmitted abroad and it is transmitted in India, see these, these differences were there for the purpose of taxation and uh, taxation is now a settled affair and uh, we, we are, uh, the transmittal can be anywhere, but uh, taxation is, uh, is same. So transmission of technology is by way of blueprints, by way of software, by way of uh, uh, designs and drawings, by way of uh, uh, giving the manuals and minutes of the meetings, all these things are the, are the part of the transmission of technology. Then territory, territory is very important because in which territory you can use this technology and exploit the technology and produce, the, produce and market uh, the products. Then exclusivity. Exclusivity is also one thing that whether they are giving this technology exclusively to the Indian party or, or, uh, or, or is there any other party that is uh, given. And similarly, exclusivity to the territory is also applicable because territory is also should be exclusive because no, it can't, there can't be two parties in the same territory. The duration and effective date of the agreement. Duration is Normally, as per the recommendations, it is five to 10 years. Even today, we are following that same, same thing as Madhili uh, Arkham recommended. The updating technology and assistance in R&D. This is a very, very important uh, uh, class in the agreement where technology should be updated. Otherwise, it, it has no meaning. And, uh, the, uh, they should, the collaborator should also give assistance in the research and development in the country. Otherwise, the, we will be still dependent on the technology of the other countries. So the effort of R&D should be made by the uh, uh, Indian industry also. And for that, the foreign tech, uh, collaborator also should as, assist. That is the purpose of the updating and te uh, technology uh, and assistance in R&D. Description of the equipment. See, wherever capital goods are uh, uh, involved, where the collaborator is also either supplying the plant and machinery or he is recommending plant and machinery the, or the equipment or uh, instruments, these should be described. If not in the main agreement, they should be there as, as annexures because this is a, the basic agreement is a public document. So nobody would like to divulge any information on uh, uh, the public document. So those things are to be negotiated at the time of negotiation itself and at the time of plant visits by the Indian uh, party to the foreign country. So that is, that is one. Then designs and drawings for making equipment in business. This I have already explained to you that uh, the why we need designs and drawings is mainly because we have to indigenously, and there are a number of things that we cannot import, uh, uh, like boilers and uh, silos and all the a lot of things can be fabricated in India also, especially in chemicals, pharmaceuticals and engineering industry. Then training of personnel in India ab abroad and duration. See, so duration also should be mentioned in the agreement, uh, how long uh, the Indian personnel will be trained abroad because the, at one go, we can send the Indian personnel for maximum of three months time. That is what is the present rule. rule. So whereas for foreign technicians to come and stay in India, is uh, there is not much, uh, there is no restriction. Then factory layout and plant layout. The factory layout and plant layout are very, very essential to see that there is an uninterrupted flow of for materials as well as uh, an interrupted flow of production. That, that's the reason why the plant layout is very important and this should be suggested by the collaborator as per his uh, experience. The technology fee. The technology fee can be paid either by lump sum or by royalty. So the technology fee in class should be always very clear. If it is lump sum, the uh, uh, the RBA allows only uh, a lump sum of, uh, in, in three payments, one third at the time of, uh, of uh, filing the agreement with RBA and one third at the time of 
uh, uh, documentation one third after the uh, uh, commercial production after proving the commercial production this is how the technology fee lump sum has to be paid and rbi has to permit the uh, uh, payment of uh, technology fee uh, as a lump sum then royalties royalties are based on the uh, the sales uh, and there is a percentage uh, and uh, the present guideline is 5% on domestic uh, sales and 8% uh, uh, on uh, export sales this is how the royalty is and tax payments tax payments are always deducted at source and uh, and they are paid otherwise rbi will not allow the technical fee or royalty payments without showing the tax payment chalans so confidentiality confidentiality is mainly because there are the technologies are proprietary in nature and it cannot be uh, uh, divulged the te technology to be divulged to other parties except in the case of some supply sense that too with the uh, uh, permission of the uh, collaborator and uh, these things have to be at the time of negotiation itself in case any components have to be sub licensed to other manufacturers or ancillaries that has to be very clearly defined then quality standards there are the international quality standards are many and uh, uh, the international quality standards for each industry are different and uh, we have to mention the in the agreement which is the Uh, a quality standard that we are uh, uh, we are adhering to so that is uh, that is the quality standard so if there are number of for example some quality standards i can tell iso 27601 for information security to 29001 for oil and gas 13485 for medical devices and so on and so forth 9100 for aerospace like this number of quality standard uh, requirements are there internationally so the product as well as the process should uh, uh, stick to these quality standards then guarantees are you can call it warranties the warranties uh, are normally provided for the uh, production the productivity and the quality these are the warranties which normally provided provided in the agreement then environmental clearance because that is one one thing uh, very important the environmental clearance also has to be negotiated because some of the equipments which are the because as per the emission standards the uh, uh, equipment that is being suggested or equipment that is being installed are uh, are supplied by the foreign collaborator should stick to the emission uh, uh, requirements also and similarly the indian party also should get the environmental clearance to make this uh, uh, collaboration successful so that should be one of the clauses which should be included then equity participation i have already discussed marketing assistance already discussed jurisdiction of courts normally governing laws are normally indian laws that is how um, the government of india also uh, uh, insists though there are certain Uh, 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 countries where uh, they also allow but but governing laws are indian and especially after doing the agreement the agreement should be registered with the sub registrar uh, in india otherwise a document is not valid so that's how the uh, uh, it is uh, uh, and in case of dispute the arbitration is one of the uh clauses that we have to provide where and which arbitration is acceptable to both the parties because there are number of arbitration uh, uh centers available so the the collaborator as well as the indian party have to choose which arbitration center is uh, uh, agreeable to both of them because there is one singapore international arbitration then hong kong international court of arbitration uh Uh, in paris and there is uh, uh also 
there is a settlement of investment disputes in in washington so these are some of the things which you have to visualize while doing the agreement and go for a arbitration in in case there is a dispute so 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 then force majeure force majeure is one of the normal clauses which we include because because of acts of god or or natural calamities or government action or uh, there is a change in the law, local law in such cases the force majeure clause has to be invoked and whenever such thing happens uh, normally the the party has to uh, inform the other party that uh, the, this is the force majeure and then the, the as long as the force majeure is in in operation then uh, the the there cannot be any uh, um, liability or penalty for uh, the party that's how it is then cancellation and notice for cancellation in some of these first major conditions if they uh, 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 continue there is a very possibility of even cancelling the agreement even uh, uh, or there may be a cancellation of agreement in case there are no clearances from government so this is one visual one thing to be visual visualized the termination of, of the agreement termination also is one of the clauses which we either there is a breach of of uh, any of the conditions or or after the end of the term that is also a termination it because it is termination comes from the word term so it, it can be terminated after the complete uh, uh, completion of the term that's how these are the various uh, clauses that are required and these things should be kept in mind while negotiating a technology transfer yeah these are the guidelines which we have uh, already discussed so i need not again uh, tell so only thing is uh, uh, any approval is valid for 2 years of the collaboration agreement so uh, till till it is uh, finally uh, uh, implemented so if it is not implemented the collaboration agreement is is not valid after 2 years that's what it is the automatic permission will be normally given by the regional officers the lump sum payment uh, uh, limitation is 2 million us dollars at three installments i have already explained and uh, royalty on domestic sales 5% and exports that also i have Uh, explained in the earlier uh, uh, slides how do you compute the royalty this is another thing the we we take the net x factory sale price of the product x factory price uh, and uh, you reduce the exclusive uh, reduce the excise duties then cost of standard bought out components in case any of the bought out components are in, 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 in this then landed cost of the imported components so both both bought out components as well as, as the imported components have to be reduced and excise duties are to be reduced only thing is the payment of royalty will be restricted to the license capacity that means see sometimes some of the uh, plants may produce more than the licensed capacity and uh, sell also but it, uh, but the royalty is limited to the extent of the uh, production uh, that is uh, as per the licensed capacity though it is liberalized there are restrictions also non resident shareholding in the uh, undertaking should not exceed uh, per percentage specified in the approval uh, uh, letter approval letter specifies which is the exact amount i mean what is the percentage then items reserved for small scale sector shall not be ma manufactured without the prior approval uh, as per the prescribed policy foreign equity in ssi sector is limited to 24% in case it is more than ssi sector uh, 
uh, industry has to de reserve, de delist from the SSI sector. That's how it is. So this I have already told that no permission is required for hiring foreign technicians. Deputation is three months. Remittance of dividend should be covered. This is also dividend should be covered by earnings of the company through export of product manufactured with, with import of technology. So legal undertaking and bank guarantee shall be furnished for export obligation in case there is an export obligation. Because next. So the tax loss, Mr. Bargwa, our chartered accountant will explain the tax loss that are applicable in this. Good evening, uh, everyone. So based on the foreign collaboration agreements and the condi uh, conditions, uh, we have broadly classified what would be the probable transactions under a foreign, foreign uh, collaboration agreement and their tax incidents under various uh, acts such as Income Tax Act, GST and the customs. So the the broad classifications are payment for import of technology and uh, fees for technical services and import of plant and machinery that we make uh, under the foreign collaboration agreement and when the remuneration that is being paid to the technicians and dividend and dividend when the equity participation is there and the interest in case of external commercial borrowings. As per the Income Tax Act, uh, the transactions these cover, these, cover, these are covered under Section 9, incomes deemed to accrue or arise in India. And the tax rates are uh, prescribed under Section 115A, except for the import of plant and machinery, as we won't be paying any tax on uh, income tax on import of plant and machinery and equipments. Uh, other tax like GST and the customs will be paid on it. So the tax here uh, tax will be uh, has to be discharged uh, by way of collect, uh, directing tax directing tax at source while making payment to the foreign collaborator. As per the rates prescribed, it's generally 10 percentage under the Income Tax Act. And in case of uh, import of uh, technology and fee for technical services, we are also required to pay the GST as as per the as per the uh, Goods and Service Tax Act. Uh, uh, these these are considered as uh, services uh, as defined in the sections of uh, GST and the schedules uh, prescribed therein. So these taxes uh, these will be treated as uh, import of uh, import of services and the igst has to be paid which is an integrated tax uh, as the as we are receiving from a territory other than india and uh, this will be paid by on reverse charge mechanism reverse charge mechanism is wherein the recipient has to pay that is the indian person who is receiving the foreign technology or the technical services has to discharge the liability of gst whereas coming to the import of uh, plant and machinery he, uh, a customs act uh, at the point of uh, at the point of import the customs act and the igst that is uh, that is that has to be levied and discharged uh, to the government this is a brief uh, idea idea or uh, incidence of the taxes as uh, each and every section would be a separate discussion altogether so that's it for the tax laws now sir will continue Then coming to service industry, the industry, service industry is a large contributor to GDP and the human resource sector contribution to gross value added is 55% and it just reduced by 2% even in COVID days. The service sector industries are transportation and utilities, information, financial activities, professional scientific and technical services, education and health services, leisure and hospitality. These are the service industries. So in service industry, information is large, uh, technology has become large in terms of foreign exchange earnings these days. And service sector is the largest in FDA inflows in India as per our previous uh, slides, uh, according to the world. And also it is according to the World Investment Report by UNTAD. Collaboration in service industry is also guided by some same guidelines as manufacturing industry. That is, see, whatever is the collaboration agreement you are, uh, we have discussed for the manufacturing industry, the same is applicable for service industry also with uh, certain specific classes. So that is one. The, this can also be, uh, uh, the agreements will also 
be classified into fixed price contract or uh, profit sharing contract. Uh, 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 th that's how the agreements are uh, are uh, drafted. Then, in the uh, government of India also envisages technology exports, not only import of technology. The foreign collaborations are to and fro. So the government of India has. Uh, 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 this uh, been, has formed a program, International Technology Transfer Program, that is ITTP. That is uh, to compile information on exportable technologies, projects, products, and services, to create awareness among foreign buyers and, and collaborators, to support the capabilities of R&D establishments and make analytical studies, to support institutional mechanism for catalyzing international technology transfer and trade, to facilitate on high technology cooperation uh, 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 trade internationally. These are the objects of the ITTP and uh, government of India has uh, also uh, uh, established and uh, uh, the uh, other institutes for, da for database by NAFET, cooperation between India and ASA, India and uh, overseas industries and the joint ventures between CIS countries and African nations, then compendium of technology exports, that is IIFT, then send the, uh, uh, that is International uh, Institute of Foreign Trade, then Center for International Trade and Technology, that is CITT, then Technology Export Development Organization called TEDO, then Technology Trade Facilitation called TTFC. These are the various efforts government of India has put in to see that uh, the smooth transfer of technology abroad also. And the ITT also has studied the transnationalizing of technologies like pharmaceutical sector, machine tool sector, auto component sector, etc. In this, I hope I have covered many areas of uh, technology transfers and foreign direct investment. Uh, I thank you all for a patient hearing and uh, 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 if any queries are there you can always take my uh, mail id and you can mail me also and in case there are any uh, queries i can answer here also questions thank you sir thank you so much uh, for such a comprehensive and detailed presentation um, I request all the members and our guests, if in case if they have any question, they can put in chat box or Q and A, and yes. also you can send to uh, Sir's email ID, which is on the screen. You can write to IACC as well. We will forward uh, in case if you think appropriate, and uh, <clears throat> we'll be sharing the uh, PPT, uh, the presentation which Sir has uh, just presented along with the contact details of uh, sir, so that uh, any member, if you need any professional help, kindly get in touch with them and you'll get the uh, right guidance and also the professional help. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. I, I don't see any questions. Maybe uh, I, I understand that obviously corporates, they don't want to discuss in a public forum and uh, you can discuss one-to-one. -one. Okay. So uh, that's absolutely fine. So okay. I'll propose a vote of thanks. It's our privilege and honor to have Mr. M. Shiva Ram Prasad Moturu, sir, with us. And we thank you, sir, for your time, your efforts, such a detailed presentation. And also for so much guidance and uh, uh, comprehensive uh, presentation about uh, the foreign collaboration, the service uh, industry things, technology transfer, and so many things. So uh, we are really grateful to you, sir, and also to your team. And uh, definitely uh, we'll uh, circulate the PPT with all the contact details. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So thank you, Mrs. Uh, Ravishenka and uh, Sujata Ravishenka and also mm -hmm. Mr. Ganesh uh, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I, I hope uh, this is... Uh, 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 a beginning of uh, such uh, and I, I thank Shika Sabarwal also because Shika was
coordinating right from the beginning i don't know today she is uh, yeah uh, so she was she was the catalyst actually so made me to do this presentation uh, i i i i hope we will meet again in some other sure definitely thank you so much thank you very much thank you